Ever wonder why Muslims are celebrating Eid on different days? There are over 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. That's almost 25% of the world population. Also, 25% of the countries in the world are Muslim-majority countries. Muslims have come a long way. The history of Islamic success spans for over 1,400 years, and more notably, during the Islamic Golden Age. Between the 8th and 14th centuries, the Islamic Golden Age was a period of cultural, economic, and scientific flourishment in the history of Islam. The House of Wisdom, also known as the Grand Library of Baghdad, at its height was the world center of education, knowledge, intellectual growth, and innovation. Remarkable advancements in astronomy where observations of the sun, the moon, and the planets was paving the way in the world of science. There are over 100 well-known astronomers of the Golden Age era that made significant leaps in astronomy. Astronomy played a major role in Muslim life. Inventions of instruments, mathematical formulas, Arabic numerals, algebra, algorithm, calculations of sun phases, moon phases, Islamic prayer times, direction for the Kaaba, and Islamic calendar. All the planets revolve around the sun counterclockwise. The moon rotates counterclockwise, and the moon revolves around the earth counterclockwise. The earth rotates counterclockwise, and in this beautiful harmony, Muslims revolve around the Kaaba counterclockwise as well. Such is the connection of Islam and astronomy. Between the 8th and 12th centuries, the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. Much of Islamic advancement in astronomy was driven by the desire of knowledge. Perhaps the driving factor was the many hadiths and words of the Quran on knowledge and wisdom. Today, of the stars that have names, two-thirds of those stars have Arabic names. This was the passion of early Muslims. Their level of intellect is beyond our current imagination. This passion was also driven by the need. The need to find the direction to Kaaba, the need of establishing daily prayer times, and the need to keep the year limited to 12 months as stated in the Quran. The Islamic calendar is a lunar calendar dependent on the activity of the moon, unlike the Gregorian calendar that we use today, which is a solar calendar driven by the activity of the sun. Islamic calendars. Interestingly enough, there are around seven to eight different Islamic calendars. The lunar Hijri calendar, the solar Hijri calendar, the Rumi calendar, the tabular Islamic calendar, the Islamic calendar of Turkey, and Saudi Arabia's Umm al qara calendar. This goes to show the level of commitment Muslims have put on organizing in the best way possible, limited to 12 months that are specifically mentioned in the Quran. Because the Islamic calendars are dependent on lunar activity, thus the months are typically 29 to 30 days. It takes the moon around 27.32 days to orbit around the Earth, but for the moon to reappear in the same place in the sky, it takes 29.53 days. Therefore, the average can be considered as a 28-day moon cycle. Synchronicity of astronomy in the Quran is beautiful. The word month is mentioned 12 times, just like 12 months in a year. The word day is mentioned 365 times, just like 365 days in a year. The word year is mentioned 19 times. It takes the earth and the moon 19 years to meet at the same starting point. This is called the metonic cycle. The word moon is mentioned 27 times. The moon rotates on its own axis in 27 days. Now, pay close attention. Islamic calendars technically have 354 or 355 days in a year. However, a year has 365 days. Hence, the reason why Ramadan comes short 10 days every year relative to today's commonly used Gregorian calendar. Wait, but the year has 365 days. What happened to the remaining 10 days? 
as the remaining 10 days are not accounted for, the Islamic calendar cannot be used for agriculture or other activities traditionally linked to the seasons, and most Muslim countries officially use the Gregorian calendar as their civil calendar, alongside the Hijri system that is limited to religious events. Throughout the years, Islamic months have been constantly moving irrelevant to the seasons, but interestingly enough, the names of the Islamic calendar months reflect the seasons. For example, the third month, Rabi al-Awwal, meaning the first spring. The fourth month, Rabi al-Sani, meaning the last spring. The fifth month, Jumara al-Awwal, meaning the first of parched land. The sixth month, Jumara al-Sani, meaning the last of parched land. However, due to the rotation of the months, Rabi al-Awwal, or the first spring, is always different in different seasons of the year. Because of the missing 10 days from the Islamic calendar, the months are not fixed. The truth is there are 365 days in a year, not 355 or 354. Should false be followed because it is convenient, or should truth prevail? With so much intellectual Islamic history and so many amazing inventions, why is it that every Ramadan, Muslims around the world run into a conflict on concluding when Ramadan should start, and especially when Ramadan should end. Is it simply because in every region, Muslims around the world on a dark night look up to spot their own newborn moon? Thank you for having us here today. Thank you. We really appreciate you taking your time out. So, uh, the whole reason we are here today is to educate ourselves on uh, the moon cycle, the moon rise, uh, and uh, essentially the phases of the moon. So for us, uh, moon rise and the moon set is kind of dependent on when the moon comes up from the sunrise or from the horizon and then kind of comes down and sets on the horizon, kind of like how the sun does, where the sun rises and then eventually sets during the day. And the moon follows the same process simply because the earth is rotating, right? right. We're not simply just standing still and everything is rotating around us. The earth is rotating and everything else is rotating, which causes those kind of things to rise and set. Like the stars, they all rise and set because the earth is rotating on itself on its own axis. So just like the just like the sun, so for example, if I am in uh, July, mm -hmm. the sun would set uh, and rise, uh, you know, for a very long period, so we have more daylight. Mm -hmm. right? So the sun could be setting at like nine o'clock in the evening mm -hmm. or rising at like, you know, four in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming the same applies to the moon as well. If it's different time of the year, it would rise and set at different times. Yes, that is correct. And that is mainly having to do with the fact that the earth is kind of tilted a little bit on its own axis, yeah. which causes the seasons. And um, that in itself causes why the sun rises at different times of the day during the whole year. And that is why the moon would rise at different times of the day as well. Inventions, so there are no confusions. Method of calculating prayer times. The sundial is an instrument to see where the sun is in the sky, which tremendously helped the early Muslims to determine the daily prayer times. However, thanks to the intellect of early Muslims, they were able to develop formulas to calculate all the times of the prayers throughout the day in advance. Note, a conflict came up, but the new method was eventually adopted. Method of calculating the direction of Kaaba, Muslims pray facing the Kaaba in Mecca as directed in the Quran. This is a magnificent concept of one direction, one people, one God, as all are equal in front of God. Muslim astronomers from the 9th century onwards dealt with the determination of the Qibla. They treated it as a problem of mathematical geography, and they produced highly sophisticated trigonometric and geometric solutions. Although, when new formulas had been determined by the Muslim astronomers, there was some conflict to adopt the new methods. To this day, a few old mosques around the world exist with the wrong Qibla directions. Note, a conflict came up, but the new method was eventually adopted. Azan heard by thousands. The loudspeaker was invented in 1924 and in 1936, Indonesia was the first Islamic majority country to adopt the call of prayer and sermons via loudspeakers. Loudspeakers certainly made it easy for a muezzin to avoid climbing a high spot in the mosque to give out a loud call for prayer. However, 
There were many objections and confusion of such use, as it was something very new to the Muslim communities around the world. Note, a conflict came up, but the new method was eventually adopted. Pakistan is the second largest Muslim populated nation in the world. Although geographically a small country, but for many years, Eid has been celebrated on different days throughout the country. However, some good news. For the first time in the history of Pakistan, the Ministry of Science and Technology has been included in the Hilal Committee. This is nothing personal, but a national issue. We appreciate the ulema, who have approved the scientific method. We urge members rejecting modern methods of moon sighting to give us a chance to explain how the scientific approach works. Federal Minister of Science and Technology of Pakistan. Note, a conflict came up, but the new method was eventually adopted. It is surely difficult to adopt change, but when change brings unity, it's surely worth it. Muslim scientists, biologists, astronomers, chemists, and architects have made a major contribution to shape the technology of today. Without those inventions and contribution, the world may not be at the pinnacle of intellect where it is today. Today, confusion is what many are facing in the Islamic world when it comes to celebrating Eid ul Fitr. When relying on moon sightings to end the month or start the month, something to consider. How would it be in the coming years when climate change and pollution will make it impossible to see the moon for the coming generations? So for the pollution for seeing the moon itself, um, it probably will get quite intense as time goes on as we're kind of seeing with uh, greenhouse gases and that kind of thing. And even clouds um, can prohibit us seeing the moon itself, right, which can be a problem if we get a very cloudy day or night when we are trying to look at the moon. In my opinion, we have so many people out there putting together calendars for the lunar cycle and we even observe the moon outside of Earth, so like up above the atmosphere we have orbiters up there that can even look, take a look at the moon and all that kind of stuff. And in my opinion, it would, if you were curious about trying to maintain the moon and knowing the cycle and all that kind of stuff, you might want to turn to those kind of things to be able to help you, some kind of calendar that people can reproduce because um, people can reproduce calendars that are quite well into the future on what the lunar cycle will be. So that would apply just exactly like the way a calendar could be made for uh, a sun cycle. Uh, exactly the same thing can be made for moon. Exactly. And how accurate would that be, for example, throughout the year, if you were to print one? Um, it would be accurate within a couple of hours almost, okay. between moon, ri moon rise and moon set. Today, Majority Muslim communities around the world use telescopes or the naked eye to spot the new moon. Perhaps there is some other instrument to be considered to visibly see the moon. Perhaps a satellite above the atmosphere. What's the best way to, to spot a moon? I mean, one is through the naked eye. Mm -hmm. uh, the other is the telescope. Mm -hmm. uh, are there any other instruments? Um, so for instruments looking at the moon, binoculars are actually a really great a way to do it because um, the moon can be so bright to your eye that it can almost be blinding if you're looking at it through a telescope that most astronomers don't look at the full moon through a telescope because it's quite bright. Um, but binoculars would be a great way for people to be able to see the moon, especially a new moon that's very faint in the sky. You would probably be able to still see it with binoculars. For people not to see the moon in the same location, there has to be some kind of error associated with that because scientifically I would consider that impossible unless there were clouds in the way. So like for example, if it's not cloudy in Toronto and they can see the moon, but in Markham or wherever it is cloudy and they can't see the moon, that might be a reason why they can't. Um, but for all around the earth, everyone sees the same phase of the moon at that same time. So. I don't, unfortunately, I don't see how it could happen where people in the same region could see the moon and not see the moon. So if somebody was in Australia, they spotted the moon, and they send me a text message, hey, you know, in a few hours, you should be able to spot this as well. Would that be true? Yeah, uh, people in Australia uh, definitely would be able to see the moon as well as people in North America. It'd be the same phase. Um, it just would depend on its moon rise and its moon set. Um, and one thing you have to think about too is that um, in Australia, you're in below the equator, the moon would actually be upside down than what you're used to here in North America. 
Although the early Muslims had the drive to learn the skies, use intellect to improve daily Muslim needs, and to avoid confusion of the masses with academics and intellect, by now, one could assume that Muslims should be the experts at the topic of cosmology, the universe, stars, planets, sun, moon, all of which is mentioned in the Quran. Right now we are in February. Um, it's just finished a cycle, so it's about to start at a new moon. And if you actually look here, as the new moon started, you can see a crescent on this side of the moon. Um, and this is in February. And if you take a look down here, you can see that this, at this point, is when um, the moon is either approaching its furthest away point or it's at its closest point. Um, and so as we continue along, you can see how there's one crescent here. You can tell which crescent is dependent on which side because you're approaching the half of the moon. That, that's how you know that the moon was born or new and then it's approaching its cycle, is that it's at a half moon. Now this is still in February, right? So we continue along, we continue along, and there's a full moon there ending towards the, it's about February 18th right now. And as we continue on, you can see how the other side of the moon is getting dark with the shadow coming up. So you can tell that is the ending crescent here because the moon was already half and now it's, em it's starting that shadow enveloping the entire moon. So you do have a start crescent and an end crescent. So that might, that might be perhaps what one of the confusion is on if it's a new moon or not. Right. So here we're at March 2nd and um, you're at your other crescent here right before a new moon. Wow, okay. That's something very, very new for me too. That's mm -hmm. cool. All right, this is good info. Uh, and this percentage here, so if it's at 1%, uh, it means we have a new... Yes, exactly. Or, new yeah, new moon. New, new, yeah. New so moon. this is about 14, 15% lit right now. And, and you're saying that this can be essentially all calculated. Yes, it can. So, you, so we can say on a safe side, if the moon is based on calculation, if it's at say 2%, it's guaranteed to be visible. Yes, pretty much depending on clear sky and all those factors. Mm -hmm. Operating telescope can be fun in some cases. Um, it can be very frustrating if you don't know what you're doing. And there's so many resources online for you to look at. The Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, um, they offer a lot of things for the public that can teach you how to use telescopes, what you want to look for. Most telescopes nowadays also offer onboard um, computers that can actually manually move it for you to an object and then you can basically look in the eyepiece and it will be almost right there. So if you're willing to spend even more money you can get ones that have computer programs that will actually move it for you which makes it a lot easier for the average person. So, so at the end of the day if somebody is using that telescope to spot the new moon at the end of the day, they do have to rely on the calculation of the, where the moon would be anyway. Pretty much, yeah. So. Um, for looking even for astronomical objects that aren't as big as the moon, we have to use on a lot of calculations to know where they are in the sky. We have actually different coordinate systems that we use to find those objects that translates it well for the telescope. Right. Yeah. So then it almost defeats the purpose of, of using the telescope, because if you're using the calculation anyways to point it at that direction, for, yeah, for the moon itself, I would recommend uh, a mixture between calculations and like binoculars of being able to see it for sure. Just because it is so big, you could probably see it with binoculars rather than a telescope. Wait, did we hear calculation required to point the telescope? Will we be able to see the moon as clearly due to pollution and greenhouse gases in the coming 50 years? Perhaps there is a need to find a common ground for at least the start and end of Ramadan. How is it that the Islamic nation that was once the intellect and knowledge center of the world is unable to conclude a simple calendar issue? Where is the ball dropped? Perhaps unity is the answer. Certainly not Islam, the religion itself, is to blame, as the Quran states the facts pretty clearly. Where is the confusion? Could it be the lack of knowledge? Lack of communication? Maybe lack of resources, or perhaps lack of unity. Muslims have done it before and can do it again. Confusion drives need.
Need drives inventions. Invention requires an open mind. An open mind requires unity. Unity equals strength. Thank you.